I'm saying what the right box for Facebook. <coughs> but, uh, <coughs> I just would like to make everybody aware that you are inside of an exhibition that was put together with material from the 1960s in London, Amsterdam, Africa, Chile, um, Lisbon, Cape Verde, etc. All the pieces you see here are unique. They cannot be replaced. If somebody destroys something, we could close down a white box because we don't have the insurance that will cover that. We're not supposed to have this many people, and please behave. We're all grown up, so we're 45, I think, right? So thank you so much. Now, you can wear a mask, or you don't have to, and before you leave, please, the city of New York funded this show. They need everybody who comes in here to leave their email address in case there's a breakup. And it's going all over. I got fucked up at night for dinner. What kind with of everybody, people? the COVID, yeah. With everybody triple vaccinated, I got COVID, okay? <coughs> so I'm gonna put this back on. And you do what you wish. Vodka doesn't cure it. And aqua beat, less. Okay, okay? All right, it's Estonians <laughs> with aqua beat. Anyhow, okay. Good afternoon and welcome to White Bots. What used to be Firehouse Lit Lounge, now it's just simply a series of conversations at White Box. Today, I have to thank the Department of Cultural Affairs for funding the exhibition Magic Archive in Resistance. That you all should be, don't touch the world, sir. <laughs> just walking, fine. Okay. Um, inside this gorgeous exhibition period, by Johanna Roa, um, and you, you read about it, then she interested in this. Because we have 10 artists, from Ivan Navarro to a very known Roland Gap artist for reacting to the archive today. We have about five academics and six writers from around the world reacting to what happened 50, 60 years ago in Lisbon with the Carnation Revolution, etc. Et and you all come from, from the lands, land, like myself, in Spain and, Spain and the fascist moment, fascist moment, moment, moment when I live. All guys, all guys come from, this from, moment, from this moment, we're living Ukraine, in Ukraine, etc., etc. Et so, so this is enormously uh, uh, effective, I think. So, so take a moment afterwards. There's no drinking here, but after the talk, you can come to the backyard, no smoking, but drink. Okay. And now, without further ado, I'm going to introduce <laughs> Dance with Me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and, uh, and Eleanor, I'm going to let you introduce yourself because I'm not one of those television shows uh, with Rachel uh, telling everybody you come with all this much pedigree as an art critic, you're a fantastic photographer, you had in this exhibition in Lithuania as well, and we are such great friends of Jonas, Sebastian, Megas, and everybody. We worked so many years together, so many aspects. So it is a pleasure for me to introduce this evening. And Jonas, would you take this microphone from me? So I don't take it away. <laughs> And this is being um, broadcasted, broadcasted because I know many people, know many right, people there right there are watching, are us, watching in us in Facebook, Facebook White Box, White Box, and White Facebook. Facebook. And, and Eleanor, Eleanor asked me asked if, this is, if this is going to be available. To be available. Yes. yes. Um, um, you can go to can White Box and, and White Facebook, 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 and it's going to be there yeah. eternally. Yeah. And then in a YouTube yeah. White Box yeah. channel. But now, yeah. yes, you can see it tonight. So you can text your friends who are not here, and they can connect to Facebook. Jim? Yeah, so I, 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 I want to be very short, and um, this is the event about, um, it's like my book lounge, and I'm really happy to have it like here in a white box with Juan, because I know Juan for many years, and um, he had shows of many like artists from Europe and uh, across the world, and our Lithuanian friends, and, and that's why I chose this place because it's very familiar to me and, you know, I really know people. So uh, w what I want to do, like, my book is about 2020, uh, about the times we experienced totally different in our life in New York. And uh, I just went out and, and just started shooting.
and it was without any particular goal. I just wanted to document it. And, uh, and, and after that, like I produced the book, it just like I thought it, it, it needs to be a book. There is no greatest hits picture in that book, but when it's all in it, 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 it it's just like a collective product of, of what I saw, what I experienced, and uh, just take a look at the book. And at the beginning of this, I just I just want to show uh, I have here this like a video slideshow, which I showed in a show back in Europe in Vilnius, like a big like video projection uh, before even I I, I I I got published the book, and uh, and uh, like it has the music score by my friend. Uh <coughs> which is a very good composer. So I, I, what I want to do at the beginning to just show that video, so you'll get familiar. The old pictures in the video are like, uh, so um, Alejandro, can we start from the beginning? Can we start from the beginning? Yeah, just, yeah, because I don't want to waste time on, let's just start from the beginning. Pardon? Yeah, 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 well, let's start from the beginning. So. So I just want to show this, and then we can have this talk, conversation, questions, whatever. You know, yes, yes. So uh, please enjoy this, and I think the music score is great. Uh, I think, where is your book, Leo? Can you tell me a little bit quickly what is the... Well, it, Vitanis uh, wanted some music, but uh, I didn't have time actually to compose uh, something new for this uh, for this special occasion. So we decided to take one of the existing pieces of mine, which is a choral piece called uh, Chants de Voyelles. It happens. Ah, maybe. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this piece is uh, just uh, voices are singing without words, and I thought it's very fitting to this pandemic situation because when we see pictures, what we realize there are no people, right? So, I mean, very rarely people, so we want to hear at least people, so that's the idea. <laughs> so, it is 15 minutes, so you like. Can hold it for 15 minutes. <laughs> One has the remote. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the same. This is the same as in the book. It has four parts in it, and every part you can see written. What we're looking at now, it's called a human just left Manhattan. So at the point, the first days of, of, of lockdown, and nobody is on the streets except you, and that's the experience. And then you will see that the different themes follow.
sorry for this.
to me, it, 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 I mean, I mean to make, make me realize what, what an extraordinary year 2020 was. I mean, it was, you know, it, it, now it feels like it's, in certain ways it feels like it's very long ago, and then it also feels that all of this sort of brings us back, and then we realize that we haven't really left a lot of this behind. But I think that what your project, to me, it, it raises so many interesting questions. I mean, one of the things that I'm, I'm struck with, you know, looking at, at these images, are questions about what does it mean to be a city? What is a city? Because is a city its people, its buildings, its, you know, commercial enterprises, you know, its, its interactions, and, it, you know, it, and also what is New York City? uniquely what is New York City, which does seem to be very different than other cities. If you had done this project in other cities, I think you would have come up with a very different kind of project. So I guess I, uh, you know, in the process of doing this, you have done many photographs about New York City in the past. How did you feel differently about the city in the course of working on this project? Well, so that's, that's a good question. Essentially, as you said, there was this chance, and mostly what you see here, it, it's mostly it was shot in Manhattan, because during the lockdown, like a Brooklyn or Queens didn't change much. People just went to their jobs. They had no, you know, like uh, luxury to work from home or something like that. But Manhattan, you know, when we know, like I live here for 25 years, like it's like now almost, like uh, this whole traffic, people move, like, and it's not only tourists, but this whole, you know, like, I d it was like very, very busy, a super busy city, you know, like from, from dusk till down. Like New York is like so different from other cities, I think that even at night it's very busy. I remember got in traffic like on 14th Street like, like four in the morning, and I spent an hour just in the traffic, it was like, what the hell? So this like lockdown situation brought, as you say, totally different aspects. Like if we talk about architecture, you could see the naked city. It was so, so amazing. Like you could see city like, like a, you know, like a, like a model of the city. Like, you know, architecture, no people, all angles. You know, it was very interesting how those spaces relate, how they look like. And then uh, the tourists were gone, absolutely. Um, other people were gone. And for example, if you, um, normally, New York is so much of people, and we have a lots of people like, I'm going to say, like, like people, like a crazy people or stuff, but you don't see them because it's so much mixed up with everything. It's such a much noise. I went to Soho, and like in the first week of lockdown, and I hear like noises, and it's like in a movie. I, I hear in distance someone is yelling or singing something on the other side, and all these people just walking the streets, talking to themselves, yelling or singing and you can hear them, you, you can, can see, see them. them. They're like, you see, you know, like evidently like only local people, you know, and, and I say like rich people, they just fled, they just like fled completely. <laughs> and then, I mean, this is I think an yeah. interesting aspect to me. Oh, oh okay. Yes. Very much, you know, as you say, the, in Manhattan, you know, the people who could afford it left, then, you know, people who were left behind often were those who couldn't, um, and you really juxtapose, you know, you, you have the empty luxury stores, and then sometimes with homeless people waiting yeah. in the doorways, so I think one of the things that I, I find quite fascinating is the way that it really highlights those sort of class issues in the, in the city. You know, it, it is, and, and I was, I wanted to like imagine and I saw it, how the city can live without like a shoe mall. You know, it's like, like if you take like a Soho now, or even like three years ago, right? It's like, it's like, a, like a shoe mall, you know, like it's just, um, I went to like, I was amazed how they left all these stores, they took merchandise out and laid up, and like, like just like, um, uh, what is the, this place, you know? And at, at the same, like aesthetically, they look nice because th there was no trash in it. It's just like, like you see the Clean. architect's idea of the <laughs> interior, you know what I mean? So I, I, what I did, like I did this lens and I shot all of them on Madison and Soho, where were the concentration of most of these stores. And, and, and turning back, like, like I went to Soho more because I wanted to see 
we can remember we have friends um, in, in the past who started Soho as an artist as a movement, like, and you have those pictures about some kind of bounding of cars, some kind of community in there. And at, at, at the brief moment, Soho happened the same. So I went there and I see people, they have like a bring out table, they have drinks and food, and you see they like sort of artists or like some kind of, you know, I don't know, but they're locals, they didn't flee. Uh, you know, f uh, you know they, didn't, they didn't fled, they just stayed there. They had like a dogs outside, they had children, they were like some pictures. And, and it looked like, whoa, it's like, it, you look at back in time, you know, like the time machine, you can, you can understand. The, the only like places were open, like some grocery stores and little bars where you can go, they, they can survive. It's like green civilization, it's not like, you know, we're dying. But without all these stores, everything, it was like really interesting to see that neighborhood. And you can imagine what it looked like before. And then all, all they put like, you know, like they put all the plywood on the stores, so artists came in and they started to create it. And it was not your regular, you know, uh, not your regular, uh, 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 what is the graffiti stuff. It was like a real art. You know, better or worse, but they were trying. So some of them just brought like pictures like yeah, and they just stapled on, on these, you know. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Uh, and they were working at night. I went around, it was like really, really like interesting experience. Well, and, I, yes. just, I just want to say, yeah. one of the things I, I think is very interesting uh, is that there's a kind of narrative to this. You know, there's an implicit narrative to the way that you've organized everything. Yeah. So you have that, that first there's the empty city, yeah. you know, and then you do see how people are kind of altering their behaviors. People are standing. Yeah, it's like know, a shock. Yeah. The very beginning yeah. was, it's yeah. like, I, told, I called it desperate hours because yeah. nobody knew what's going to happen, or, or people are dying or not, what's like, so I went to all these streets, then I went to see the hospitals, what's really happening. I ha there are a few shots here from morgue, this morgue door, and, 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 and they had all these refrigerators ready, yeah. you know, for people to store whatever, you know, I don't know. But it was this, I called it desperate hours because it was like really, everyone was, that's why it was so empty, because everyone was like in shock. And then the third one, the end of fancy shopping about these stores, because it was like, yeah, how we see how it would happen if we don't have that? What would be New York without, you know? Yeah, all, yeah exactly. Yeah. With all this, all the, the money. I mean, the money yeah. is what builds New York. But, but and so this is like a, a different thing. Yeah. But what's also interesting to me. So you have this. You know, you you. There's this sort of narrative where we go from from you know the the empty city, the the people, you know, the empty storefronts, and also sort of people changing their behaviors. The, the people waiting in lines. Yeah. But then there, what's interesting is, it, yeah, mm. as we have here, yeah. But, yeah. but what's interesting is that there are, you see that also that there's a kind of reformulation of certain sort of social atoms as well. And part of it is around the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that part of what made it such an extraordinary year was, of course, that it, it, you know, that also erupted in the middle of it. But that also created sort of new forms of, of kind of social life, and you see that as well, you know, and, and people sitting together outside, there's a new kind of, you know, sort of outdoor sociability, so it's not just a grim, I mean, it's an apocalyptic quality, but it's not just a grim picture, I think. Of well, art. to tell you the truth, it may be, people maybe will, you know, uh, have different opinion. To me, it was totally different experience. To me, it was like a kind of enchanting experience. Almost, I felt very, very good. You know, I understand, uh, like really, this is a tragedy. We have a virus and people die, but this is like a natural causes, and we, we know how to fight it. You know, we have masks, they have like medicine, or like, you know, whatever. Like, you know, we try all together as a society cope with it. It's not like a war, where some part of society tries to kill, you know, it's, it's different. But it, to me, it was like the idea uh, you could see the city from different angle was very interesting. It was like people at the same time come, came together. Even those events with a lot of police and everything, they were not super violent. They were like sort of things happened where I remember we sit in the coffees, you know, we're having drinks. There's like a mount of police runs by. There are some students protesting, something, you know, something that was like really. It's like you like in the movie, something's happening. Like, you know, they had all these rallies on the bicycles and everything. Oh, you, you know what I mean? I mean, it was looting and everything. Yeah, it happened. But it's not like on a mega scale, like sort of like apocalypse. Not like that. It's more like a, like, it was like a kind of protest and like 
you know, it, it was, I don't think that business is like really like, you know, bankrupt because of that. I mean, it's, it's no good, but it, you know, yeah. things happen. I, I don't think it, it was like on a scale, it was like in Los Angeles, right, right. you know. No, no, in that, that, in that yeah, year. It was only a day or two anyway, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. No one died right, of that, right. you know? But, uh, but I, and, and so, I mean, I guess now from our perspective, looking back, I mean, it, it does feel like it was a long time ago, even though it wasn't. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that the city has, has changed? How has this, I mean, has this whole experience changed the city, or have we just, are we just sort of going back? you know, kind of to what we were before. Well, tell you the truth, I, I, I deeply believe we're going back. Because this is, you know, things happen and then it goes back because I think um, the one year or two makes a very little dent into like, like, a, like a continuous uh, trend of like, you know, it, it, this is the city, it has same laws, same businesses, same stuff and it moves the same direction. So, I mean, the things change, like what we like, we have all this stuff on the street, like all these wood, mm -hmm. like a shacks, which I really love. <laughs> you know, you can see that. Well, this may stay for a while, whatever, you know, but, but, but the rest will come back, tourists and like Broadway, like shoes, like and everything. You well, know? So it's like, you know, I'm not saying it's bad, it's whatever, but, but yeah. it was interesting. Well, I think there will be some, I mean, I, I live in Queens. Yeah, and me in too. Queens, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I live a couple of blocks away from 34th Avenue, which is the kind of poster child for the, you know, the open streets yeah. uh, project where they closed off yeah. 34th Avenue and it's become a kind of boulevard yeah. like the Ron Blas. And, mm -hmm. and, and there's a feeling that, you know, even when things come back, if they come back, that, that it's that's become a very valuable thing for the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, it's a new commodity. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a place, a public place for people to come together, yeah. and, and, and people love it, you know, and, and it, it's it's wonderful, you know, and, you know, you see uh, people with their strollers, and, and there's bikers, and there's, um, you know, the skateboards, I mean, the, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's very alive and active, and it, it, it cars aren't allowed. You know, and yeah. so I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be some things like that, you know, that will remain, you know, we will have learned something about, you know, ourselves and uh, again, you know, this question of what is a city, you know, the city is about people, yes. you know, that how do we have yes. a place for people again? I think you have a very good observation. And in this case, when I came to the city 25 years ago, I, like, you know, I, I used to travel in Europe, not too much, but, I, you know, I'm like Berlin, Paris, like, where, you know, all these places. And it's like astounded me how this city is like regulated by police and closed and like everything, like, like all these people like on a sidewalk that just pass by. Anywhere you want to have a drink or eat, you have to go inside. It's like a deadly air conditioning, like all this like dark and it's like, you, you know what I mean? Nothing is like, there is no street light mostly, but you just walk. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was like a kind of strange, very few places would be like, well, like in Europe, people on the street, they sit on the sidewalk, they, you know, they stay, you know, like, and that's what happened. So maybe that will stay more or less because people loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, like in COVID time, at the end of the summer, everyone was on the street, and kind of like police would stay away, they didn't say anything if you had a glass or whatever. I went to Brooklyn, and this like, a, a, at the end of the Broadway of Brooklyn, and there is this little square, and you see Billingwood Bridge, and at night I walk, and they see these people, there are those tables, the public yeah. tables. And champagne, this couple, and they sit, they have the champagne, and they enjoy the bridge. You know, so, but that's the, you know, that's, in the former times, they would just pack you. They would just take you to police right. precinct and fine you. And then, they, you know, you can, you know, it, it's so unviolent. And, you know, you want to go out, right. picnic, enjoy. And, you know, so maybe this will kind of stay, and that would be wonderful. That would... That would be a yeah. profound change. Right. Not profound change, but sort of no, I think it would unique. Be, I think it would be important. Yeah. And, it, and in a way, you know, that it, it feels like it, maybe it brings New York back to what it was. Yeah. Because, I mean, the other thing... Maybe it really was like before war or, right, or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because one thing that also struck me about the, the, the work, I mean, mostly they're in color, but you have some that are in black and white. Yeah. And some of the black and white ones make you think of, of you know... Um, archival photographs, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and, and, and of a New York that, you know, has been superseded by, yeah. you, know, all the, you know, all the skyscrapers and, and you know, it, 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 it was more focused on a kind of neighborhood life. Yeah. And in fact, 
many of your photographs do that. You know, that they, they hone in on on a street, on a block, rather than, you know, these, you know, huge yeah. buildings that, you know, kind of dwarf us and, and make us feel very small. So some of the, the, the black and white pictures yeah. in particular to me brought that back. And I was curious about why I mean, you chose to do some in black and white and some in color. Well, this is like, a, like a my creative process. Like, it's very intuitive. When I look at the picture, you know, like sometimes a color works or sometimes color says something or just like you think it looks okay. Sometimes I just, it, it, it doesn't work really and I want to get it to this, as you say, sense, maybe to sense like a, in, like a little in the past, maybe retro feel or it just like, it, it's, it's, my, I'm very like um, intuitive. I, I don't base anything on some kind of system. I just look at my picture and I think, okay, I, I do variations and I try to choose what's better. Something's very hard. I think, oh, this is color night. No, but I want to do this because you know, I go back and forth, back and forth. But, uh, but it's, uh, it's a good question, but I, I don't have like a direct answer to it. It's very intuitive. And, and the, another thing I want to do when people go to the book, I don't want to feel it. It's it's not like documentary. It's like you know, like like other people do, like very stylish. Like let's say, oh, book is in one kind of sense of color mode and everything. I I want to do it because it was a long time, like a year, different moods, different cameras I use, different like like just like okay, it's like every picture tells a new story. And another thing with me, I can't continue on one kind of mode or style. For me, it's very hard because. I always want to change. It's, it's my my personal thing. So I want every day. I want to do something a little bit different. Well, sure. And so actually, this is a thing too that I, I was struck me. Yeah. Um, so the, the the black and white. Some of the photographs yeah. do have this kind of nostalgic feel. Yeah. But then some of them, the, uh, yeah. particularly the color photographs, have this very futuristic feel. Yeah. You know, particularly some of the ones in the airports. Yeah. Know, and and they, I mean, they also kind of make me. I mean, they, they're cinematic. They they yeah. see, almost feel like they're referencing. You know, kind of. Apocalyptic films that we've seen, you know, or these futuristic films. So I was curious about, if, were you conscious of that at the time? Yes, indeed. I, I really, I, I really like like a, a cinematograph. Like to me, like you know, like, I was, like sometimes I think like, why do we even take pictures? Like you watch the movie, and every second is like a super like picture. So you just take those frames and you can do like a show. You know, it's like amazing. Like of certain directors is a very good like uh, you know. Uh, camera people. Um, sometimes it's boring, they use those filters and it's like a green and red, whatever, they all movie, you know, whatever. But some of them, like you take Aldomovar or something, it's amazing. And you see what they do, like, you know, and, and, and I really like it. So if, if, I, if, if I see this scene and I can like capture that moment, which looks like almost like a studio produce something, you know, that's the moment I wanna capture that. And sometimes, of course, I go to computer, I do like, a, you know, I enhance things, I change a little bit. I, 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 it's not like 100%, nothing is fake, but it's like modified mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. sure. I really want in my pictures, every picture you see, like this one, okay, you see this is Broadway, it's empty, it's done. It's got, like, you see the story, you kinda, you kinda get it, what's going on. Because from my childhood, I was a really big fan of uh, this kind of artist, like, you know, like a Bruegel, or something where you look at the picture and it's like, ho, oh, it's like, ho, oh, you know, you can, yeah, this, this guy cool. does this, this guy does it's a big that. Panorama you know what I mean? Complex, yeah, yeah and, 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 and that's the story. And, and, and I like the story. Look at the picture and what it says to me. It could be an abstract picture also, but it's like a story. What, is, what are these shapes are trying to tell me? It's not like some random whatever, you know, and, and that's what I'm trying to do. Like, like this one, what was the picture before, it says like, um, I like that guy, it's like amazing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, nobody. It's, it's, it says, well, it was something like walk through, you know, like, and it's nobody there, you know. Right, like, and, right. and, and, and the sign says, just like, don't stop the traffic. Mm -hmm. You know, so like when I have pictures, I've, I've done a lot of pictures in the subway, I really like to, like, messages in the subway. Sometimes you have some ad or something, how they relate to the people inside. Sure. And sometimes they're very interesting combinations. Well, and know? this is another thing too. But I, I mean, I was really struck, particularly some some of the ones here. Yeah. You know, and you we're seeing these advertising images, yeah. and of course, mm. you know, 
they, it's, it's weird, like at, at the time, in the time of COVID, it's like these people have a kind of freedom that yeah. we have lost. Yeah. You know, you see people, you know, without masks yeah. and, and, you know, gathering together yeah. in these, in these yeah. ads. Yeah. And, you know, this sort of, yeah, here, like these yeah. idealized sort of pictures of, of life. And it, it, particularly in the time, it, uh, mm -hmm. in, in 2020, yeah. it, there was a kind of sense that we didn't have that. So there, it's sort of this idealized picture of what we we don't have anymore. I well, mean, it's it's very weird because like everyone's fled, but this whole like like business and like it stayed. It would be f interesting that they would just like took down lights and yeah, Times Square and like forget about it. We just switch off. But yeah. we're very rich in this country, so electric like like nobody cares how much electricity we use on this. Oh. No one is in that square. They have it like home. And it's like interesting, like I went shooting, it was interesting that not too many people were with the camera. You know what I mean? Like I imagined like, like it's, it's like a playground for photographers. Not really, I met some, but it's not like, like everyone was like in the bushes or something. But like the, the show was on, like everywhere. Lights, you know, in the stores, like, in, like we're super, like we, we're incredibly rich. You know, we can send like billions to Ukraine. Every, it's just like insane. How much money is here? You know, because otherwise no one is using just switch it off. You know, <laughs> but it's no. It was interesting. That that part was interesting. Everyone was like working. You know, like right. like yeah. around the clock. Yeah, you know? no, yeah. It's, it's true. And then that helps to also accentuate this sort of let's say this sort of class thing that yeah. you know I kind of think runs through a lot. Well, of then we have a budget we paid for, and then and then it goes. You know, and yeah, yeah. and then the sense of the people who were yeah. out there. You know, I mean, well, delivery some, people, delivery here, people yeah. police. I mean, yeah. that, you know, there were, as you say, there were certain groups who couldn't, you know, flee, no. and yeah. so they were, yeah, they were there still. Well, so do you feel like um, you would be interested in continuing this project now? You know, it's like it's 2022, and you know, we're still not back to normal. Things yeah. still keep changing. I mean, it's it's sort of amazing how it, it keeps mutating. I mean, would you keep you know, trying to chronicle this? Well, I have very short span of attention. I think this is done. <laughs> I have I have more and more pictures. Maybe in the future something I can get it from this something else. I'm moving on, and I, I have old material about the city, which I love. So my second book will be just about New York in like an eight-year span, maybe, mm. with the different themes I, I mostly experience here, about the village, about, you know, like I, I'm not telling now. It's not like a secret, but I'm working on it. Uh, and then I want to do this trilogy because this one was the first book I read published because of this hot issue and topic. So I want second do about New York, the same size, maybe same format, so we can make a. And then the third one, I I I, I have tons of material and I did shows about a, a subway. It's called mm -hmm. uh, a J, uh, J J to Manhattan. I'm about train I was commuting with for like 20 years back and forth, and I I took pictures around and in. And they had different projects on it, so I want to develop a book that would be the third book. So that's what I'm concentrating on, and I'm keeping just shooting. Well, my process is I don't create the projects. I, I collect material, and I shoot what I like, and I, then I do projects after and that. And then you see what you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't have time. It's very hard to kind of create a project and then go on. Mm -hmm. and, and the way I do it is mostly like a strip, almost photography. So it's like how you can... You don't know what you're gonna get. So I, I try to work in a sense like I want the world to surprise me. Not I surprising the world, world surprise me. I go, oh, and that's why I try to oh, carry cameras all the time with me. Sometimes I don't shoot at all, but most like most time I do. A lot of crap I shoot, I have tons of like nothing, like, right. like worthless stuff. But then again, then you go two years back, in the worthless stuff you find sometimes yeah. jewels, you know, because at the beginning is that impression, oh, there's nothing good. And then you come back, oh, <laughs> this, yeah. this is pretty good. So it's like, uh, th th this way, so I don't know if I continue in the COVID, maybe something really dramatic gonna happen. Right now I don't see that, we're getting to the regular stuff, so I need to invent maybe going forward something else. But now I said in my plan is like the New York book. Um, I'll call it like, I don't know the name it, but it's like uh, uh, overall, it has material. Mm -hmm. And and J to Manhattan about my travel on, 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 on the subway. Right. So yeah. that's the, yeah. yeah. Wow, well, we're looking forward to that. Well, I need to find a publisher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I think.
think we could open it up for if there are questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you shoot with? What do you? Uh, what do you? What are your cameras? Well, I, I right before before pandemic, I bought Nikon Z6, and then I bought Z7, and and I bought. No, 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 no. No, no, it's, it's like, uh, what is this, mirrorless, mirrorless, like full frame cameras, mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, some of it is shot with the iPhone, but very few. Like in this book, it's only one picture. Huh. But for my um, travels on J2 Manhattan, most of them will be iPhone, because it's very hard these days operate camera in the clothes, you know, pro, you know, it, 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 like it's, I saw these pictures people done in New York, you know, in a subway, and I was wondering how they did it, like without being killed or something. <laughs> and, you know, but then you get it like, you know, you don't know. You look at the picture, oh, those cool guys are dangerous, but maybe they're friends, you know, pals. You never know how that situation, uh, as, you know, escalated to these pictures. So phone gave me this, uh, you know, kind of like opportunity, like everyone is their phone, uh, like, and like, like get there and, and, and capture the subway life in New York. So I, I made it like a couple of big shows, like big shows. One was in Contemporary Art Center in Vilnius, one was in Tallinn Art World, and a few other smaller shows just on that material. And I really enjoyed that. But then I got like kind of tired of this. I have like hundreds of thousands of pictures. It's, it's just like huge, huge amount of, but it's like, but it's like serial. Like shoot like, you know, like it's like almost a movie. And, and, and for this one, I wanted better cameras because I wanted to do a book or maybe a show, so you need more resolution. You, little, you can crop a little bit, and then what I find out, when I went out shooting, I needed like really quality zoom because sometimes you want like a big picture, sometimes you want to focus, and all those zooms are crap, like 4.5 aperture. So I spent like, like, really cons like, like really expensive zoom I bought, and it paid me off because it's like the 2.8 aperture all the way, and and that saved my life basically. But that's like a big camera. You go. It, it's like some people don't like it when you shoot them. Some like don't care. New York is not the worst place, by the way. And there are play, like in Queens is harder. Manhattan is okay. In Queens, like those macho guys, they just like sometimes they just corner at me. They didn't kill me, but they wanted to take camera and things like. And in Queens, I shoot with this more, but it's still the like, hey, like, you know, you shoot barbershop, and they're like, oh, they run out of barbershop, like, hey, man, like, like two of them, you know, like, they're trying to, like, oh, give me the pictures, yeah, you know, it's like, like this. But in my head, it's like, it's like, what my concept is about it, when I shoot people, I try not to put them in a position where I, like, really, uh, try, you know, like, try, you know, like, some people just take pictures of people, Oh, he's fat. Oh, he's like yeah, this. Yeah, you don't want oh, them to like be intrusive. And, and yeah. yeah, and sometimes I shoot really dangerous and really bad situations, but when <laughs> I'm trying to hold on for a couple of years, and then but because some, I have pictures of, of dying, of, you know, people who of drugs on the street in East Village, and I'm thinking how I need, but I probably will do it in the book because I think it's a document of the time. Mm -hmm. But being a photographer as a street photographer is a hard task because you intrude people privacy. By the way, you do. And I, like, I went through this, I don't care. I, I, I'm, I'm, my task is to document it and then to put in a way where it's like, like, it's, it's in line. But like, like, okay, this is a story. This is about neighborhood. And neighborhood is not only nice faces, but what happens here. And, and I think like, when you shoot kids, it's easier because kids grow very fast. So I wait a couple of years and then like feel free to show it because it's like yeah, they, they don't look like this. They don't look like this anymore. You know, it's like yeah, who knows? Yeah. You know, so that's like easy task. With adults, it's a little bit different. And uh, but but you know, I try to somehow manage that. But my idea is like this famous pic. There are a few famous pictures from the war time in Vietnam about those naked kids running yeah, and, yeah. and, and from the home. And it's such an impressive, important picture. But if you take these days. And in this privacy whole situation, it's like hundred rules are broken. You can be like in a jail for this, almost like pedophile, like an, anything you want. And I say, hey, but that's the document. That's what we have. Or like this guy, who, you know, I don't want to go into the details. So I try to kind of manage through this, you know, like somehow, because I want to capture, I want people go back and see, hey, this is this village, yeah, right? It's like, 
And, and sometimes I'm like, oh, should I show this picture? I definitely don't put it like on the Instagram uh, right now. Well, there are, yeah, there's yeah. ethical so questions. Would you say that this is a difficult moment because the political correctness we're suffering right now? For good or for bad, for ugly? Well, it's always there. Well, 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 my position is like I try to stay um, like like um, um, like I I told Elena before. I try to stay out of politics. So I am I am like a Democrat. I vote, but I don't want to participate because I don't want to be used. I want to be this guy who writes the book about you know. I want to be neutral and show it. You know what I mean? Because there are many sides to the story. And of course, I'm kind of biased, but I try not to be. I just go, and what I see, I shoot, and I try not to make it specially like situation. You know, like they have well, those pictures. Yeah. Oh, these people do yeah. this. Oh, no. Yeah. It's just like incorrect way. You know, like what I, how I see. Yeah, you're not trying because to I'm polemical. not politically yeah. engaged. So what I see is just like what I see. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, no, you're not polemical. Yeah, so I'm trying to be just honest mm -hmm. with myself and what I'm showing, and not to kind of like put on one side and just like, you know, push it like, you know, like, and then make some kind of, um, 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 you know, like, big story of it. Right. You know, we have a couple more questions. Yeah, any more questions? Feels like an art school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if there's no questions, we have wine in the backyard and we can go and enjoy it. Pardon? You have a favorite picture? Of what? Okay. No, I love all of them. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> and, and like, like, I, I love all of them. They're so different, and they were all, you know, like I, I, I shot so many. Like this one is awesome, right? It's like yeah. curbside, curbside haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this was like what is like pre-war maybe in New York. You know, things like that, or this like. <laughs> I mean, um, no, I don't have favorite picture now. Can I just ask you yeah. where you took two photographs? The one of the pole dancer. Uh huh. Wasn't everything shut down? Right there. Yeah. Not funny. And then the next picture of the woman who is yeah, yeah, on partially the street, nude. Yes, uh, yes. She's wearing a black boa. It's right at the Yeah, yeah. We'll go to this. Yeah. I, I wanna, I, I'll explain you this. Uh, yeah, yeah this one. one. Yeah, so that's that funny. I went to the opening of this, like, uh, right here that's on Bowery. Uh, so it's outdoors. So this is the. Um, we went to this club. How it's called? Um, oh, the club. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the name. <laughs> yeah, so so basically, people were struggling. You know, these performers. I know these. I know a few so of these so girls. Outside. Like, yeah, so well, that, that picture was outside. But where was the picture of the pole dancer? The pole dancer was in meatpacking. They had this project uh, called. Uh, like they had this performances project in meatpacking in abandoned stores windows. Because of the COVID, so people would sit outside in the winter. Right? Like the, the coast. red light district. I mean, yeah, sort of. We don't have that, but it was in New York interesting to see. So when there, people pay a ticket, 50 bucks, to sit there, but like it's public, everyone can go back and forth. So I come up and I take those pictures, and this guy goes, oh, Did you pay for this? I go, No. So you should, like, you move back. But by the time we made like 60 pictures, you know what I mean? And, and, and that was interesting because that's like a pole dance in the window, you know what I mean? And, you know, so you can do it, and it's like everyone is sitting here, and it was interesting because like before that, like before COVID, you wouldn't do that in New York. They would just like sack you in the jail, you know what I mean? The kids like on the street, but this moment allowed to do pole dance in the window or burlesque right on the sidewalk. So these people were on the sidewalk playing like a real, like a live musical. I went to this like uh, the hall and, you know, galleries next to it. I went to the opening, I go, wow, what is this? The mu live music, and then I see girls dancing, you know, just taking off the clothes. <laughs> so, shit, I my was like, it's like awesome. And then it's like, that's because they were struggling. So they got people, right. paid tickets, they were sitting at the tables with the coats, you know, and they had burlesque over there. Wow. And, 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 and it showed that it's possible. It's not that, that I mean, look, if you have kids, you can go, I, I don't know. But it was like really, to me, it was like, whoa, it's a new horizon of like, it's, it's possible, it's not like, you know, something just closed doors. Wow. I have a question. Do you, do you have a lot of uh, post uh, pro production computerized effect and the, the, we see some, some color totally saturated, you know, in the. In the well, the, the first of all, the, those videos and, and TV saturate a lot. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Like you can look at the book, like I do, I, I manage. Sometimes I do okay. more. And usually I desaturate a little bit because cameras now give like a really rich saturation of, right. of images. 
But some colors I saturate sometimes, like if I want like red or I want this or that. And then something maybe it caught your eye. I have black and white with the layer of the different color, especially in those shops. So I wanted to just mm -hmm. delete this like un unnecessary colors and just bring to this like kind of like, like like a pink light or something and hold on it. So you're right. So th there is a lot of post production like even in this image. See like and now it comes like like sun you know going down you know like like <coughs> very, very little but but uh, like uh, you, you know I, I want to do this with like it, you won't like really see it much. But, uh, but some of them black and white with color overlays and, and yeah, you're right, it, I, I did that, yeah. Because I approach this like a painting, well my background is an artist, like uh, my education is sculpture, and then I moved on to painting. So for me, photography is I, I approach the same as a painting, like a canvas. So I take a picture, if I like it, it's fine, if I don't, I repaint it, that's, that's what I do. I don't leave it like, you know, I met these people in Lithuania, they like, so strict in photography, it's like nothing you can change, like, like absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And I agree, okay, you're fine, I, I get it, but it's not my, you my, can make your own because why, like if you, if you paint something, you do whatever you want, you just like, no, there is no rules. So I think to me in photography, there's no rules also, whatever you want, you do. So what's a little bit funny about these people, but, but they have their point, they do. And then another point, a strict documentical uh, photography, which is published in the magazines, like, well, you know, the like time or whatever. I get it. What they say, you should be like just like straight on the camera. But yeah, if I would have this, uh, or what do you say, assignment, I would do so. Yeah, because that's important. Nothing should be, nothing should be touched. You know. But this is artistic project. Whatever you want, yeah. I do. Yeah. The other photos of endless fireworks. It lasted in New York for six weeks, non stop. And well, police in Dumbo and in Vinland. No, it's very hard to take photos of fire. No, but, but well. all these crowds, you know, and peop people, police can do anything. I you know, I know, that was crazy. You I couldn't sleep. I, I, I live in Vinland, so I have something in the phone. projects. So they, they brought this. I don't know why they got so, yeah. so many fires. But that's a good point, listen, I missed yeah. it. Like you can't do like everything, you know? And police would come in. While I was <laughs> doing this project, I was working for the company. It's not like I had a free time, you know? Like it was like I needed to manage. So, but that's a good point, that's like awesome. It's very hard to so. take pictures of fireworks. Is that real? I'm not that like, super professional, yeah, you know, like national After Black Lives Matter. Matter. <laughs> 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 fireworks for fireworks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I live next to Gracie Mansion, yeah. briefly, in mm -hmm. those days. And uh, the Hasidic came to protest, and they brought fireworks. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. <laughs> noise <laughs> machines. Wow. What mayor? Um, okay, so I think we might. So everyone is tired, I guess. Let's go to the back yeah. and up. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. How much is the book? No, no, one, 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 one second. Two, one second. Two, so I, there is a table here, and I have my books here. Like two of those books are like out of this wrap, and you feel free to go through and look at them. And I have more books uh, uh, because it's not my books, it's, it's my publishers. And if you want to purchase them, you may, I can sign it, it's like $60. In Europe, they say for 45 euros, but they arrive here, it's very expensive, shipping is crazy. I, don't, I won't tell you the price what they shipped me last time. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. So, so then, then, then you feel free if you, if you like, uh, if you like to purchase, or you just like, or just like, just browse those books, just take a look at them. There are two open, and and, and that's what I wanted to tell. And one second, let me say goodbye to everybody on Facebook. Thank you for being with us, and stay tuned for the next one. Yeah? No, no, just thank you. Then. But I'll, I'll send it. I have it on the okay. on, on Now, one second, pick up. Anybody who's able, pick up your chair, fold it, and bring it to the backyard. We have to be quiet. You can drink for free. Don't take too much noise.